Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for providing this opportunity here at INTUW to pre present my work. So um, for the title, that um, is Harmonic Traps Unitary Fuel Body System at Finite Temperature. So there are four keywords. And uh, um, so um, about so before I want to I go to the uh, topic here, I want to go about the outlines. And uh, so first, I want to introduce the systems we are going to consider and uh, give some motivations. And then uh, I will uh, give some simple pictures of the past intro sim Monte Carlo simulations I'm going to use later. And uh, um, at last, I will give present two of our results. First is the um, two component for the gas, and uh, the second is about the sing single component, both gas. Um, so about the motivations, um, since we are look at the um, finance systems, and uh, that can be applied in um, quantum dots, nuclei, and also co-atom experiments. And uh, uh, there is this uh, field body experiments, and uh, uh, so uh, this will uh, our theory will be directly applicable in this experiment. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that uh, our result is exact, um, even though th there might be statistical errors. And uh, it's also easier than the uh, many body systems. Um, so the system we are going to consider is a uh, in harmonically trapped system. And uh, um, there can be bosons and fermions. And uh, um, however, this is a zero temperature picture. And uh, what we are looking is uh, a finite temperature picture. So a uh, system can, uh, there can be an excited state occupied both for bo bosons and fermions. What I want to mention here is that uh, the number of particles here is fixed and it's also very small. Um, we want to um, ask the questions uh, what happens to the system if there are finite temperature and uh, if there is interaction between them and uh, if we in introduce different particle statistics. Um, so uh, first about the temperature. Um, we are considering the uh, canonical ensemble, which means um, there are systems that we are interested in here, a few of the system, and in contact, in thermal contact actually with the uh, heat bath at fixed temperature. Um, so there is uh, no particle exchanges. Mm, so for this kind of system, um, if we are able to solve the uh, energy spectrum directly, and then we can actually sum up all these states with the Boltzmann factor here, that will give us the partition function. And uh, we can extract many information from that partition function. The last thing. Um, the last thing I want to uh, mention is that the temperature we want to consider is uh, could be much larger than the degeneracy temperature, that, and also it could be close to the degeneracy temperature, so that should be smaller than the Fermi temperature. And so we can um, we can plot the temperature regime here, that uh, uh, from the high temperature regime that the system behave like um, Boltzmann particles, so there is no exchange effects. And uh, we also can reach very extreme low temperatures, and uh, where this both and Fermi statistics show a strong effect. However, um, we are not interested in extreme high temperatures that the uh, hi higher partial wave uh, channels uh, can scattering effect will be become important. So we are limited into the S-wave approximation. So which means that the potential here we are considering is a short range. And uh, um, we, cho we chose the Gaussian interaction potential. Essentially, it's a smear out dot function. Um, the range of the interaction we are considering is uh, very small. So for a typical um, value, it will be a 0.06 harmonic trap length. Um, so throughout this talk, I want to mention that I'm working on the unitary regime that the scattering length is diverging. Um, so a few notes on the statistics. Uh, we are considering two different types of systems. And uh, so the 
left one is the uh, two components um, Fermi gas. So there is two spin ups and uh, one spin down. So we denote this as uh, two one system, as we will use uh, this notation later. Um, the um, for also we consider the sing single component both gas. Uh, there are interactions between all these particles, but for fermions, there is only an um, interaction between different components. And uh, um, so um, in nuclear physics, uh, there could be a P-wave uh, interaction, but we are not considering this. Um, but, but, you sh are you sh I mean, I'm, 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 but your potential is a Gaussian. Yeah. So that has P-waves. Um, yes. Uh, so for the Gaussian, the um, range of interaction is very small, so the P-wave is suppressed. Um, but you, I mean, you don't have an interaction between the up-up particles. No. So there's no interaction there. Right? And I just correct in the up-down channel, there's a tiny bit of P-wave contribution, but it's small, and you didn't see that. Um, so, um, because the uh, scatterness is diverging, uh, so for the uh, two component Fermi gas, the harmonic trap length is the only length scale. Uh, however, for the three bo for the boson single component both gas, uh, there is uh, also the three body parameter that come in. So the length scale will become um, harmonic trap length and the one over uh, the three body parameter. Um, so. Um, here comes the uh, numerical method we are using. And uh, um, at for the past intro Moncaro method, uh, it can treat both bosons and fermions, and it's a finite temperature. For bosons, we can reach to a large number of particles. But for fermions, we are actually limited to small amount of particles. And uh, the essential mm, ingredient of the um, past intro simulation is the um, density matrix. So um, we project the density matrix into the um, positional basis. And uh, um, we can get the partition function from the trace. And uh, we can also calculate the um, thermodynamic observables by taking the trace of the product of the um, density matrix and the observable. So next, I'm going to show an example of the um, observable that is a density. So that will become a delta function here. And, uh, and this actually links, makes the, uh, di the uh, density matrix a uh, diagonal one. So the R prime should be the R. And so here, uh, we are considering a one-dimensional system. And uh, um, the, uh, uh, notice here, we have the same position. And uh, if we repre represent the graph here, that the starting point and the end point is the same. So in general, um, the Density matrix is very hard to calculate if we are at low temperature. However, um, if we split this um, density matrix into many different terms, and we can see that uh, this is essentially a uh, higher temperature calculations. What we uh, the caveat of this um, this separation is that we actually introduce many integrals because we actually in inserted many position bases. And however, uh, the Monte Carlo method is good at integrating multi-dimensional uh, integrals. And uh, um, so here, uh, first, uh, we insert one of the bases, so the m becomes two. And uh, here, each link represents one of the density matrix. And uh, um, this is, we reduce the temperature by, uh, we reduce the uh, temperature by one half, and the excuse me. What do you do? Vertical axis here, and this is the graph. Oh, this is the mm, graphical re representation of the past. So, so vertical around the, the tau, the imaginary time. Yes, yes. Uh, what do you show? X zero, X one, X zero. Um. So this is the um. So we only we discrete discretize this path. And the, so this repre represents the first point of the path. This is the middle point, and this is the last point of the path. The trace. Uh, it's a periodic imaginary time, right? Okay. Yes. In, 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 your in your red formula, can you point at your x naught and your x 
one? Um, so this is an x naught, and the, this is the uh, x one here. And the uh, so uh, the x so m minus one is actually the same as x one, and uh, here the final point is the x zero here. Are the coordinates of these? <coughs> Not the vertical coordinates. Right? Uh, also, vertical. There's no time here. This is the real idea, density matrix, uh, index. Um, uh, I the vertical is the imaginary time. Yes, yeah, the vertical is the imaginary time. So uh, if we want to think of in the uh, imaginary time picture, then this will be the imaginary time of zero, and okay. this will be half of the imaginary time, and this is the um, full imaginary time. And uh, at the final point, we actually have to return to the original position to make the density matrix diagonal. Um, so we can in include more, uh, insert more position basis and make the, uh, uh, reduce the error. And uh, um, essentially, what we reach is a path that has tiny error, that the error is within our statistical noise. <laughs> and uh, then we do that many, many times, and uh, if we bin this data, and it will um, give us the density of this uh, certain um, system. Um, so that was for the single system in 1D, and if we want to introduce um, more particles, we actually have to consider the particle symmetries. Uh, so the density matrix can be uh, modified by the um, original density matrix with the um, permutation op operator. And here, as the, as the example I will show for two particles, the um, permutation operator is written as one half times one plus minus the P12. So that it will become uh, permute the um, particle of one and particle of two. And for the plus sign, for the boson, and minus sign, for the fermions. And so um, this identity permutation corresponds to the path on the left. And the um, permute, permute operator here corresponds to the path on the right. For the left path, um, the thing first particle moves in the imaginary time and returns to its own position. But and the same for the second particle. But in this um, permuted path, the first particle actually evolves to the place of the second particle. And the second one goes back to the position of the first particle. And this, this actually is the permutative path. And the, notice that there's a minus sign for the fermions. So at low temperature, um, this two contributes about equally. This means that um, if we want to use a statistical method to sample this um, density matrix, we are actually getting uh, canceling terms and that introduced the uh, Fermi sign problem. Uh, at high temperature, there is uh, no problem because the um, path is mainly contributed by the identity permutation. And uh, uh, there is no exchange effect. And this only shows at extreme low temperatures. So if we map the uh, signal to noise ratio as S here, and we plot this as a function of inverse temperature, um, so as the x-axis increases, the temperature actually decreases. So here are different system configurations. So there is two fermions, two spin up and one spin down, up to five spin up and one spin down. So for all these systems, uh, the signal to noise ratio decreases after lowering the temperature. And uh, as we add more particles into the system, um, we see that uh, this noise increases. Uh, can, can Did you assign a classical action to each uh, path in the n-dimensional computation space? Uh, yes, uh, so um, for the... Uh, I mean, what's the weight of this? Uh, what's the, the number contributed by each path? Uh, what's the integral of this module? Um, so you are referring to this picture, is that correct? Uh, yes, all, this, all, all the two particles. Um, so you have some action to, for this? 
Yeah, so um, for um, we c if we write the uh, density matrix out, um, This is the density matrix, so the action, I think, is the log of that. So that should be uh, proportional to the density matrix, as uh, to the Hamiltonian. So. so for each path, you assign some lambda, right? Yes. Yeah. number for each path. And my question is, that is that a number something like e to the minus s, some action or something? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so um, th this, uh, this is the... Um, weight of the path, if you yeah. want to view that. And uh, uh, at, uh, at high temperature, this weight is much larger than the second weight. And uh, at low temperature, this are approximately the same. So my point is, uh, so you do some integral, yes. many-dimensional integral, right? Suppose that you divide the time slice uh, by, let's say, 10 time slices, mm -hmm. to roughly 10 dimensional integral. Uh, or 10 dimensional integral, that works too. Okay. Then my question is, what is the integral? Um, so uh, for uh, one of the integrals, uh, so I mentioned that the uh, integral is easier to do at high temperature. So what I mean by that is uh, we can, in one way, we can approximate uh, the uh, density matrix by so here the Hamiltonian is actually a uh, kinetic energy plus uh, my, uh, potential energy. We can approximate by a simple form. Plus a higher order correction. And uh, uh, so this is uh, our, our way of calculating the uh, weight. Uh, so for at the positional basis, this is um, uh, just a uh, modulated weight. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, um, kinetic energy term. And uh, uh, we, if we want, you can uh, transform into the <coughs> momentum basis. But in the positional basis, it, this is uh, just a Gaussian. And uh, uh, for this, uh, this is also uh, simply a weight. Um, so uh, you can look at the uh, zero temperature limit of that. Um, so for this pass, um, if we look at the non-interacting system and uh, uh, so uh, This will be the product of two density matrix. And uh, this is for the identity matrix. And uh, for the other one, so this is the uh, permuting the path. And, uh, um, we can actually uh, integrate this out the second, um, th th this is, is x2 here, and uh, this is uh, giving us the um, pass at uh, twice of the temperature, uh, sorry, uh, twice of the inverse temperature. And uh, um, at low temperature, these two are approximately the same. Um, okay. So, um, however, we want to notice that uh, the temperature regime here for the uh, lowest temperature we can reach is um, far below the Fermi temperature. And uh, here is the uh, Fermi temperature regime. Um, so, uh, now we have the every uh, component of the uh, simulations 
um, methods. Now we can look at the observables. So uh, we pick the uh, contact here because uh, that is imp important. And uh, it's valid at both uh, zero and finite temperature. Um, and it's generally unknown for the uh, trapped field body systems. Um, this contact here relates several different um, observ physically different observables. And uh, um, we want to emphasize on two of them. So the first one is the uh, short range behavior of the pair distribution function. And uh, uh, that is the uh, probability of finding two atoms close together. And uh, the second one is the, um, and the energy, uh, the derivative of the energy with respect to the inverse uh, scattering length. So I will show you an example of calculating the uh, contacts by the these two uh, relations. And so for the left, uh, we are looking at a 2 1 system. And the. Okay, so right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> on, on, the, on the right, uh, if we I look at this angle, then it's the left. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, so for the uh, 2 1 sy system, uh, we can uh, calculate the energy spectrum using the uh, correlated Gaussian. And uh, um, if, if we look at the uh, slope of this energy spectrum, we actually extract the contact. And for the um, pair, pair relation, um, so um, here we plot the 3-1 um, system, uh, the pair distribution function at different temperatures. And uh, so at height, uh, as the temperature evolves, we can see that the, the peak shifts outside to the trap. And uh, we want to uh, uh, focus on the short range part. So we just uh, magnify this part. And uh, we see that uh, this behavior is actually uh, non-universal because that we are looking at a Gaussian potential. And this is the, about the range of the interaction. And uh, so uh, in order to get the universal contact, we have to look at the data here that's larger than the range of the interaction. And uh, uh, we then do an extrapolation to the zero point and uh, read the value as the x-axis. And that gives us the contact. But, I mean, the t equals zero calculation, was that done with this method, or would it be like exact calculation? Um, for the t equals zero, we can do both methods. So that two agrees. I mean, the zero is probably not exactly zero, right? Um, if we use the Corey Gaussian method, then that's Exactly zero. But, but, but your, in your density, maybe how small is zero? Is that um, the tenth of a harmonic oscillator energy? Uh, so uh, for the, the, the t equals zero uh, curve is actually calculated using the Cauchy Gaussian method. O only the finite temperature one is calculated using the pass integral. And what's the lowest temperature that you can treat with the pass integral Monte Carlo approach for the 3 1 system? Oh, we have to go back then. Uh, <laughs> that's at this point. So uh, that the temperature should be around 0.6 of A. I'm a little bit confused then. Does it say that the signal to the noise ratio is simply 10 to the minus 3? Um, it's proportional to that. So that, uh, that uh, only uh, gives the uh, uh, only characterize how worse is the Fermi sign problem. So uh, that is a, a signal to noise ratio mm, caused by the uh, Fermi sign. That's so and overall not the uh, uh, overall because that if we in increase the uh, simulation time, we can actually reduce that ra noise ratio. Yeah, sure. So I, I've not understood this graph actually. So signal to noise. So you want that to be much larger than one, I guess. Oh, sorry. The so one is actually the maximum that limit, and uh, that is the. Uh, signal to noise of one. It doesn't. It's not very. Oh, we we can define the signal. Yeah, we can define that to like as any way we want, and we said actually one is the maximum because that will be there is solo contribution from this identity matrix. Yeah. 
uh, identity per, um, permutation. So. I will guess this, this signal to noise ratio uh, decreases according to the energy gap in the fermionic ground state. The energy gap? Yeah, between the fermionic ground state and the bosonic ground state. Oh, um, the, uh, for the bosons, we don't have this problem. And no. this but when you simulate the fermions, then I think. Uh, the bosonic ground state is is uh, impeding the simulation. Yeah, oh. we can talk about. It. Yeah, maybe we can discuss okay. this so later. You you've decided to call ten to the minus three, and that's uh, that's that's when you call it a day, and this is what the best I can do. Yes. Um, I think um, then uh, after that point, uh, it will be extremely difficult. Okay. Uh, so this is the zero temperature calculation. Which method? Which method? Yeah. Oh, the correlated Gaussian method. Oh, um, so for the actually, if we want <coughs> to use the um, uh, pass intro for that zero temperature, uh, the uh, signal to noise ratio will be uh, uh, exactly zero, and that kills the problem. So we we are not doing that the finite temperature method. Right? So if it's at in, in, uh, zero tem zero temperature, then this x axis goes to infinity. And uh, these curves actually go to zero. Yeah. So there will be no signal at all. So the so zero temperature curve yeah. in the pair distribution function yeah, yeah. Itself is calculated by a different, different method. method. To the one presented before, right? Yeah. Okay. And the finite temperature calculations are using the pass integral Monte Carlo method. So I think I for this yeah. talk, it's, it's if you see zero temperature, just assume it's a method that has not been I discussed, see. but you it's essentially exact, and that's just for comparison. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I might make a comment about uh, this uh, graph. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, the, even though the pair correlation deviates from the contact, from the uh, zero range uh, result, uh -huh. after, when the distance is comparable to the range of the interaction, yes. I think the, these data curves are valuable, but. Uh, one needs to come up with a theoretical method to extract the contact from from that non-universal curve. Um, so um, we f so for he uh, here the extraction uh, extrapolation method there is a physical meaning to that is because there is a boundary condition uh, makes the uh, derivative of that that point uh, to be zero because the um, I, I'm saying that uh, you have using this plateau. To extract the contact. Yes. I'm that one could also extract contact from this non universal curve within the range of interaction. I think if you show your next slide where you compare the zero range results, it will become clear. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, here I will show the uh, contact uh, for the uh, 1121 system. I think. Can we just, so, Shida was simply suggesting to where you suggest. Uh, yeah, I'm suggesting that uh, one could uh, derive some formula for the short length correlation within the range of interaction. But there's a, yeah, but you could also define the contact that is like the higher order contact by related to the factored range, and then ex use use this to extract. Right. The there, there will be some correction, but uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that uh, this is curve within the range of interaction is. Uh, you Say that again. The curve for the the pair correlation. Uh -huh. Within the range of interaction is useful. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it can be used uh, to extract the contact. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but we, I'll, I will show later that uh, the range effect is actually small in all the calculations. Uh, it's probably hopefully a typo, right? It's the blue and green curve, are they for the same temperature? Um, no, they are different temperature. Um, so blue, blue and green. Uh, this. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is a type of sound. Uh, there, there, there should be different temperatures. I can look up the value for you later. Okay. Um, so, uh, so for uh, for one one two one system, we can numerically calculate the uh, contact uh, as a function of the uh, temperature, and uh, we can also use the uh, Curry Gaussian and the B spline method to uh, c compare, and we see there is agreement. And also, uh, we see that uh, at low temperature for the 2-1 system, there is a slightly increase of the contact. And we, achieve, we can explain this using a two simple two-level le model. So what's, what's this B-spline and CD? What's this? Is that a fit to this data? Oh, no. This is the uh, zero temperature uh, calculation that using the energy, uh, energy spectrum. Yeah, so we can actually uh, compare with the zero range model calculations. And uh, so here the dotted lines are the zero uh, range calculations. And we actually see that uh, at high temperatures, uh, the zero range model actually agrees with the uh, final range model. And uh, there is only tiny difference at uh, low temperatures. So this is the contact density? No, the total contact. So it's uh, integrated over the entire system. But uh, uh, then the dimensionality of your y-axis is, is it dimensional? Oh, so uh, the contact should uh, is actually in the dimension of uh, inverse scattering, uh, inverse harmonic oscillator length, and we uh, just uh, plot the dimensionless dimensionless uh, quantities. So we divide that. We divide the unit out. Uh, so it's the um, probability of finding two particles close together. And so it, at high temperature, naturally speaking, that and it will uh, f the particle will fall apart m more or less. You can go back to the formulas you had at the beginning of your talk, right there, for what the contact is. Okay. Yeah. There are two definitions. Can you also calculate the spatial distribution of the contact density? I didn't calculate the contact density. But you can, in principle, you can extract that from your data. Yes, but uh, the, uh, we, because we are looking at the field system, so that's uh, not quite as meaningful as the homogeneous systems. Well, could you be. can get the inhomogeneous contact density. That's the measure. Um, so the, uh, the density is extremely low, then. Even if the density is very low, we can still Okay, yeah, sure. In principle, yes, but we didn't we calculate that. that further in the discussion. For me, this goes beyond the talk. Um, so as we now look at the range effect, it's small. And uh, there is another interesting um, physics is that even for this small system we are considering here, well, we have a similar uh, cluster, expan cluster expansion. That is, um, the physics uh, of the 3-2-1 system uh, in high temperature, it's mainly determined by the two-body physics. And uh, if, we calc if we approximate the 2-1 contact uh, twice of the 1-1 one -one contact, we get very uh, good approximation at high temperature. And uh, this is an ana analogy of the uh, very expansion for the grand canonical ensemble. Um, so we can uh, change that. We can increase the number of particles to 3-1 and 2-2. Two -two, uh, we uh, plot the um, numerical data here. And again, we can, for the low temperature regime, using the uh, other techniques um, to calculate the um, contact curve. Um, for the 2-2 um, two -two system, the uh, range of interaction we choose a 0.06. But as we know that the range effect is very s small, so we can increase to larger ranges. And in this way, uh, we are approaching a lower temperature. 
and because the uh, noise will be become smaller. Um, again, we can uh, using the cluster expansion technique actually to um, approximate the um, both the three one and two two systems. And more interesting is that we can uh, have higher order contribution uh, approximate so that. For the three one system, we also uh, consider the three body physics, and that will give us a higher approximation here. And we can see that uh, for both of the systems, um, th the approximation can reach a lower temperature than the give more accurate approximations. So to summarize uh, the uh, two component Fermi gas, we think that. As for the small n, we actually beat the Fermi sign problem and provide accurate result for the uh, free body systems. And uh, we, at low temperature, we see a non-monotonic behavior for the spin imbalance system. And uh, for the high temperature, we can express and uh, approximate the uh, system using cluster expansions. Um, so, um, OK. Um, so uh, here, uh, we discussed uh, fermions before, and now we want to switch to bosons. Um, so uh, we can look at a toy model using uh, three identical bosons. And uh, if we look at the energy spectrum here, um, uh, the function of the three another three-body parameter, theta v, that can be related to the Kappa star. And uh, uh, if we slice that, um, such as we fix a three-body parameter, and we can map out the energy spectrum here. So um, what we see here is that there is a deeply bound trimer, and there's a huge gap between them, between the trimer and this huge density of states. And the, um, but where did this spectrum? In principle, you should have infinitely many trimers there, right? And you're throwing oh. some of them away? Yes, um, in principle, there are more deeply bound trimers down below. <laughs> um, so I'll give you an uh, uh, so, <coughs> so before I reach that, that yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you said it's a zero range interaction. I thought you would have to have infinitely many. Yes, so uh, for finite range, uh, then it will be cut off. They will be regularized. Um, so for different ranges, we can actually map out the free body parameters there. Um, and uh, so, uh, to give a look at the um, scales of energy and the uh, uh, range of interact, uh, sorry, is the uh, uh, length scales. So um, here we provide the uh, trimer energy here um, to the uh, ratio of the harmonic trap energy is about eleven, and that means that for cesium, this is a very strongly uh, harmonic trap, and uh, uh, so um, if we look at the size of the trimer, it's sitting around here. And the body axis, yeah. P hyper or P oh, this is the um, hyper radius distribution function. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, so this is about the size of the trimer, and uh, this is about the size of the um, harmonic trap. And uh, uh, if, we if we increase the ratio, we can actually push the um, length scale further to the zero point. And that means that we have two competing length scales in our systems. Um, so, uh, should we give that? You, you're fine on time. OK. Um, it's better you explain things than not. OK. Um, so uh, we are having um, finite range potentials. And so that means that the uh, if we plot the um, hyper, if we plot the um, hyper radial distribution function, we actually see a difference here, and uh, uh, this difference here uh, will become smaller if we look at in the free space for the um, for the highly excited states. They actually have a universal uh, ratio here, but uh, so we claim here that the system. The finite range uh, interaction and uh, Gaussian potential is not fully universal, but it's a f of like state. And so uh, we can um, plot the uh, 
energy is a function of temperature for the three, three boson systems. And uh, uh, if we look at here, that uh, the symbols are for different um, range of interactions. And uh, uh, at high temperature, we notice that they are converging to a si single line. And we can actually approximate the um, high temperature. Is that the expectation value of the energy? Yes. Um, so at high temperature, this can, the system can be approximated by the uh, three non-interacting identical bosons. It's because the um, interaction effects are suppressed at high temperature. And at low temperature, we notice there is a seem to be a smooth curve for each of these uh, symbols. And uh, they are different because um, the range of interaction difference that sets the three body parameter different. So um, we can uh, approximate that by uh, a frozen trimer in the center, ma in, in the relative um, motion and uh, plus uh, the center mass excitations. So the, the, uh, the partition function is the product of the two. So this is the center mass excitation and this is the um, ground state trimer um, partition function. And uh, uh, it seems to be that um, this intermediate temperature is more in interesting and uh, we observe uh, that uh, if we simply add these two terms together and uh, having the uh, partition function as the summation of the two, we can um, also map out the uh, energy curve as a function of temperature. And uh, the agreement is excellent for all of the three. And uh, this is because the uh, interaction effect is uh, not as, as important as the density of state. So as long as we describe the gas-like density state uh, approximately correctly, then we actually have the uh, approximate form of the partition function. Um, so uh, there are two uh, important features is that as we increase, as we decrease the range of the interaction, we see that the um, phase transition like feature occurs. So there will be two length scales in the system and uh, two energy scales in the system. Uh, also, well, I want to note that um, the trimer energy actually, this one determines the full, full curve. Oh, uh, for this spectrum, we have a we do have a trap, and uh, this is this states are also uh, actually affected by the track trap. So, um, if there is uh, no trap, then uh, this state can also become like a shallow bound and trimers. But because they are affected by the trap, and they become gas-like states. So you kind of fix the trap. My question is, if you would make a very shallow trap. Yes. Um so the deeper ones is um is not there because uh, we have a finite range. Yes, yes. And the um, shallow one is not there because we have a trap. Um, so we, we approximate this by con continuum states, um, but we do actually have a um, partition function that describes um, all these um, discrete um, states. So this is actually a sum over all these states. Yes. So in principle, uh, we can calculate the uh, uh, 
system, we can calculate the energy of the system using the zero range model. And uh, that actually agrees um, on the scale shown here with the uh, curve here. If, if, the, if we are a zero energy induction, then the energy gap from the ground state to the gas wide right space uh, is infinite, then at any finite temperature, the system is uh, frozen to, to the primer. Um, so is this crossover? This is just because if you have low temperature, you know your Boltzmann distribution will not reach to the continuum states. So you sit, sit in the primal states, and those are the lines you have here. But then once your temperature is larger than the than the energy gap, you start to populate this continuum. Of yes. Continuum so states. at low temperature, uh, here we are stuck in the uh, trimer state, and uh, as the temperature increases. <coughs> uh, uh, the trimer actually dissolves and uh, it goes into a gas-like state. So, uh, yeah, I think the temperature sh should not only be larger than EHO, but it should be come, come over to the energy gap, which is even larger than EHO. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah. this temperature, uh, this uh, smear out transition temperature, is actually comparable, uh, determined by the uh, E-trimer. So. Uh, if uh, we are providing a more deeply bound uh, trimer, the energy, sh uh, this should be shipped to the right wise. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe one more comment. So if that energy gap was a lot smaller, then the simple model wouldn't work, right? Because then you would lose that energy gap and you would have to do something more fancy. You could do the unmet answer and the Yeah, we can discuss that. Later, it's actually not so easy because you need a lot of states. Sure. Um, and then um, the other comment is that um, you know you can actually take this partition function, you calculate the energy from it, and then you take the derivative, and then um, the second derivative of that, and that gives you exactly <coughs> where that transition sits, and you see. It's not exactly like you said that it has the temperature has to be larger than the energy gap, but you see that it's changed a little bit just like it's shown here. I mean, you can do this all analytically and get these estimates. Uh, what is the energy? Let's clear that up in the discussion. Uh, so. Uh, we can, uh, so uh, as mentioned, that uh, we can calculate the uh, key capacity by taking the derivative of this energy curve. And uh, um, also, we can increase the number of particles to four. And uh, so here, uh, these uh, lines are, uh, our, uh, are the uh, combined model that if we are feeding this uh, model into uh, the ground state energy, and then that will spit out the curve here. And the symbols are the past central simulations. And uh, uh, see that the uh, agreement is excellent um, for both, uh, also for the four particle number four. And also, uh, for the four particle case, as we uh, go from the low temperature to the high temperature, we actually can observe that uh, the trimer state, uh, the tetramer state here persists uh, here, um, even so, so the tetramer states pers persist at uh, such high temperature that there is uh, no way that the system actually becomes into a, in a trimer state. And uh, um, it's not a mixture. So, so there is no uh, intermediate uh, energy level that uh, have the system can behave that there's a three trimer, uh, there are three particle form a tri trimer and another three particles sitting around. So, uh, so we can also increase the number of particles to five. And uh, here uh, <coughs> we observe that the, um, the heat capacity peak increase hugely. And that means that uh, the uh, transition, this smeared out transition the, is uh, showing up more strongly effects here. But you don't have the Monte Carlo data for. Oh, so for the uh, n equal five, um, 
I simply use the um, passing from Carroll to determine the ground state energy and uh, uh, feed that into the combined model and that will produce the curve. And uh, uh, we did an uh, checks for this all this intermediate temperature. So um, we can repeat this process uh, for many more particles and uh, the uh, critical temperature can be determined by the peak of this heat capacity. Uh, so here uh, we plot the uh, critical temperature as a function of the number of particles. Uh, and uh, uh, here we observe an uh, almost straight line. And uh, um, however, uh, this critical temperature behavior depends on the uh, ground state energy. So if we have different ground state energy, the curve could be could be look different. So um, here we look at the uh, ground state energy, and uh, um, as a function of the number of particles. Uh, for n equals three, the energy is uh, we set the energy as one. Uh, as, uh, uh, sorry, it's not as one. On the right, on the right hand side, <coughs> that's one. On the left hand side, that's about eleven of the harmonic oscillator uh, energy. And uh, as the number of particles increases, the ground state energy increases very fast, and uh, we approximate this about um, n squared. And however, uh, so this is limited to the Gaussian potential. And uh, there are also other data that showing the ground state energy. So um, the red, red symbols are Javier's data. And they're using a univer a more universal approach that uh, the size of the trimer is actually much larger than the range of the interaction. And uh, the uh, ground state energy curve here is proportional to the number of particles. And uh, um, is the ground state energy very large particle or large, large negative? Yes, so that's uh, more negative. I mean. Oh, okay. So what you plot is the absolute value of the yes. So the uh, ground state. Uh, yes, I sh I probably have to put an absolute value here. Um, and that's for a system in the track. Or is it for a um, so um, because that uh, the ground state uh, is almost not affected by the trap, so uh, this curve is actually free space calculation, but it will be applicable in the trap. Um, do you find only one part by a state? Uh, excuse me. Do you find only one bound state, or there are few bound states? Oh. Um, so uh, this is a uh, uh, ground state trimer, and uh, there is actually, if we re free space, there could be many um, bound, uh, other bound states, but um, we are not considering no, no, that. I mean, for four body and five body, in, in four body, four body and five body bound states, is it only one bound state or a few? Um, so in free space, uh, for the four, bo four bosons, uh, there is actually two bound states bind to each trimer. But in your case? Uh, we are plotting the uh, ground state mm, trimer. Did you see uh, another state? This is my question. Um, there is, uh, so for the, in the physical system, there is another state. But that state uh, almost contributes nothing to the uh, energy we will consider there. So the Gaussian Um, so if you look at the, um, yeah, the, the, the four-body four calculation, 
So uh, for the past intro simulation, uh, indeed we can probe that state, but the effect of the state is so small that at any temperature, um, the effect is suppressed. So at low temperature, um, it's small compared to the deep bound trimer. And at high temperature, it's small compared to the huge dense of state, the gas-like state. And uh, um, this is a simple model that only takes into the ground state calculation and they agree. So there are uh, also other predictions for this uh, uh, universal behavior of the uh, ground state as a number of particles, and they differ. And however, uh, we want to say that uh, as long as there is the um, ground state energy feed into the model, uh, we can calculate the uh, critical temperature. So um, for Javier's data there, we can predict the um, transition temperature as a function <coughs> of number of particles. And we see that the temperature actually goes slower than the uh, number of particles. So um, to conclude for the single component both gas, um, that, uh, we find a si simple combined model that can describe this phase transition-like features. And uh, uh, that from the low temperature, it's a droplet state, to a high temperature, that's a gas-like state. And uh, um, so there are a few questions that we raise here. That uh, it could be that uh, experimentally we can ex realize this kind of systems, and uh, for a few particles in the trap, then the uh, ground state trimer can be probed, and this phase transition feature might be explored. And uh, so here in our ex uh, calculation, we assume that the trimer energy is much smaller than the trap energy. Uh, so the absolute. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, the trimer energy is much greater than the, uh, uh, the absolute value of the trimer energy is much greater than the um, trap energy. And uh, uh, so it, it will be interesting, like, uh, to see the effect that uh, how the trimer, what happens if the trimer energy will be at all in the order of the oscillator energy. Um, so for the outlook that for the um, both gas, we can um, calculate also many other different interesting quantities, such as the superfluid fraction, and also increase the number of particles. And there is also actually a calculation done by uh, Werner Krauss that looking at the system using 100 particles and uh, trying to map out the uh, transition. Um, so uh, we can also try to include the three-body force that will enable us to go to the uh, universal FMOB regime. And uh, uh, there can also be calculations of condensate fractions. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We have time for maybe one or two questions, yes? So did you calculate the contact of the post? Uh, no, we didn't calculate.